saving me from all fear. He has set my feet upon a to St Andrew's Church Online. The reflection this morning will be led by members of the Bible study group, Gaina, Carol, Joyce and Teresa. Dan is playing the music, Joyce and Paul are on comments and Nick is managing the technology. Let's take a moment to be still as we gather now to pray together.
The opening responses are based on Psalm 19. Come to me and listen to my words. Hear me and you shall have life. Come to me and listen to my words. Hear me and you shall have life. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure and gives wisdom to the simple. Hear me and you shall have life. The statutes of the Lord are right and rejoice the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure and gives light to the eyes. Hear me and you shall have life. The fear of the Lord is clean and endures forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. Hear me and you shall have life. More to be desired are they than gold, more than much fine gold. Sweeter also than honey dripping from the honeycomb. Come to me and listen to my words. Hear me and you shall have life. Now we come to a time of confession. The word of God is living and active. It judges the thoughts and intentions of the heart. In the light of God's word and in the knowledge of his love, let's take a moment to reflect on the past week and seek forgiveness of our sins. Your word convicts us. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Your word commands us, repent and believe the good news. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Your word assures us. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May the God of love bring us back to himself, forgive us our sins, and assure us of his eternal love in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Bible reading this morning is from John 3, verses 1 to 15. Now there was a Pharisee, a man named Nicodemus, who was a member of the Jewish ruling council. He came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one could perform the signs you are doing if God were not with him. Jesus replied, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. How can someone be born again when they are old? Nicodemus asked. Surely they cannot enter a second time into their mother's womb to be born? Jesus answered. Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of water and the spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the spirit gives birth to spirit. You should not be surprised at my saying, you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. How can this be? Nicodemus asked. You are Israel's teacher, said Jesus. And do you not understand these things? Very truly I tell you, we speak of what we know and we testify to what we have seen, but still you people do not accept our testimony. I have spoken to you of earthly things and you do not believe. How then will you believe if I speak of heavenly things? No one has ever gone into heaven except the one who came from heaven the Son of Man. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that everyone who believes may have eternal life in him.
This morning, I want us to consider two aspects of the Bishop's rule of life, read and learn. On Thursday evenings, our study group try and do just that. It's not always easy, and I sometimes find that the deeper I explore the Bible, the more questions I have. That said, I wouldn't have it any other way. As well as building valuable friendships, my faith is stronger, and I have a closer relationship with God. A biblical example of a man who sought to read and learn is Nicodemus. We first meet him in John chapter 3. He's a Pharisee and a member of the Sanhedrin. The Pharisees were well educated and they knew their scripture. However, not all of them lived it out as they should, and it's no secret that there was no love lost between Jesus and the Pharisees. But Nicodemus was an exception. He sought Jesus out, not to trick or deceive him, but to learn from him. Nicodemus understood that for all he knew, there was even more he didn't. He'd seen Jesus's miracles and knew there was something special about him. He believed Jesus to be a teacher from God and wanted to find out more. So Nicodemus came to Jesus at night. Perhaps he didn't want the other Jewish leaders to know he was speaking to Jesus, or there could be another reason. The Jewish teachers taught that the best time to study God's law was at night. Maybe Nicodemus wanted to discuss important spiritual matters in private. When Jesus speaks to Nicodemus, the first thing he says is, I tell you the truth. I love this phrase. It's something Jesus uses over and over again in the Gospels when he wants to emphasize important statements. Jesus tells Nicodemus that there is only one way to enter God's kingdom. A person has to be born again. The Greek translation can also mean born from above. Even though he was an educated man, Nicodemus didn't understand what Jesus was teaching. And I suppose he had two choices here. He could have nodded in agreement and wandered off none the wiser, pretending to have understood. Or he could admit his ignorance. I imagine you all know the story of the emperor's new clothes. Two swindlers arrive at a city and posing as weavers, they offer to supply the emperor with magnificent clothes that are invisible to all but the wisest. Although the emperor and his officials are unable to see the clothes, they're too afraid to ask questions, not wanting to appear ignorant. When the weavers report that the clothes are finished, they dress the emperor who sets off in a procession before the whole city. The townsfolk also go along with the pretense until a child blurts out that the emperor is naked. We don't hear what happened next in this story, but I can't imagine things turned out particularly well for the emperor. Fortunately, Nicodemus isn't like the emperor in the story. He's wise enough to admit his ignorance and he seeks to learn by asking how a person can be born again. Because of his honesty and genuine desire to understand, Jesus reveals heavenly truths. He references a biblical precedent from the book of Numbers. The Israelites were wandering in the desert. They'd complained about God, so he sent snakes to punish them. The snakes bit and killed a lot of people. Then God told Moses to make a bronze snake and put it on top of a pole. When the snakes bit the people, the people had to look up at the bronze snake. If they did this, they wouldn't die. Of all the signs that God sent to the Israelites, manna from heaven, water from a rock, quails in the desert. The snake required a response from the people. They had to look at it to stay alive. In John 3 verses 14 and 15, Jesus tells us, just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so the son of man must be lifted up, that everyone who believes may have eternal life in him. For us to have eternal life, there are two things which need to happen. First, the son of man must be lifted up. This happened at the crucifixion. And second, a response is required. We have to believe that Jesus is the son of God. We don't immediately discover what, what Nicodemus takes from his secret encounter with Jesus in John chapter three. So I'm skipping ahead to chapter 19, spoiler. After Jesus's crucifixion, but before his resurrection, Nicodemus revealed himself as a believer when he came with Joseph of Arimathea to prepare Jesus's body for burial. He provided a mixture of myrrh and aloe in extraordinary quantities, exceeding all normal proportions. This was a royal burial. 
Nicodemus publicly acknowledged who Jesus is. Because Nicodemus had a real passion for learning, his one conversation with Jesus was life changing. I wonder what all this means to us today. Are we like Nicodemus in his quest to discover the truth? Are we prepared to take time out of busy schedules to read and learn? Are we seeking an encounter with Jesus? There's an amazing promise in Jeremiah 29 verse 13. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. So when we find Jesus, as his promise says we will, what will we do about it? Will we respond to him as the son of God and invite him into our lives? Will we acknowledge him publicly? Will our encounter be life changing? For further reflection, our Thursday evening study group have shared some ideas about what difference studying the Bible has made to them. We'd like to encourage you to explore these on the podcast and blog. And now the collect for today. Merciful God, teach us to be faithful in change and uncertainty, that trusting in your word and obeying your will, we may enter the unfailing joy of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Faithful one, so unchanging, ageless one, you're my rock of peace, Lord of all, I depend. Let's move into a time of prayer. Let us give thanks for the gift of the Bible and pray for all who enable it to be studied, understood and loved. 
Almighty God, in your goodness you have given us the scriptures to equip us for every kind of good deed. We give thanks for all who translate the Bible and pray that through their work and skill, your word may go forth to the ends of the earth. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We give thanks for all who distribute the scriptures and pray that through the written text, your people may be built up in faith and love. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We give thanks for all whose learning interprets the scriptures and pray for biblical scholars and theologians that more light and truth may break forth from your word. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We give thanks for all preachers and teachers and pray that through the word proclaimed and shared, your church may grow in holiness and discipleship. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We give thanks for all who read the Bible in public worship, for all study groups and training courses, and pray that through the study of the scriptures, your word may find a home in the hearts of your people. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Gracious Lord, grant to us that loving your holy word we may adorn it with obedient and Christ-like lives to the glory of your name. Amen. As the music plays, let us share our prayers on the screen or pray quietly in our homes, remembering that our loving God hears all our prayers. Let's bring our prayers together in the words of the Lord's Prayer, 
As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. As we draw to a close, we thank you for joining us this morning. We will be live again on Wednesday this week at nine o'clock for night prayers. You can also visit the online church page on our website, where you will find details of how you can join our Thursday evening Bible study group and other resources. Go now in peace, knowing that we have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable, through the living and enduring word of God, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among us and remain with us always. Amen. the power of sin and darkness whose love is mighty and so much stronger the king of glory the king above all kings who shakes the whole earth with holy thunder who leaves his breathless in awe and wonder the king of glory the King above all kings. This is amazing grace. This is unfailing love. That you would take my place. That you would bear my cross. You would lay down your life. That I would be set free. Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me. Who brings our chaos back into order? Who makes the orphan? A son and daughter, the King of glory, the King above all kings. Who rules the nations with truth and justice, shines like the sun in all of its brilliance. The King of glory, the King above all kings. This is amazing grace. This is unfailing love That you would take my place That you would bear my cross You would lay down your life That I would be set free Oh, Jesus, I sing for All that you've done for me Conquered the grave, worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave, worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave, worthy is the
the Lamb who was slain. He is worthy, worthy. This is amazing grace. This is unfailing love. That you would take my place. That you would bear my cross. You would lay down your life. That I would be set free Oh, Jesus, I sing for All that you've done for me This is amazing grace This is unfailing love That you would take my place that you would bear my cross You would lay down your life That I would be set free Oh, Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me